All right, so let's see what it takes to create and deploy an Amazon RDS database. So first of all, we need to figure out what the engine is. So the engine is simply the server type. So think of SQL Server, Postgres, that sort of thing. And the way to get all of the available engines is using the git rds db engine version commandlet. And here on line 16, I am sending that to group object and I'm grouping that by the property of engine just so we can see all of the available options to us. And once I do that, it gives you a nice view, all the different names. So notice we have Aurora, MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and lots of other options. So there's lots of options we can have as far as uh, SQL's engines. So because I'm cheap and I want to just use the SQL Server Express engine, we're not going to be doing anything crazy at this point. So if you look in the last four lines, you'll see SQL Server EE, EX, SE, and Web. That's for Enterprise, SQL Server Express, Standard Edition, and Web Edition. So EX is SQL Server Express Edition. So that's the one we're going to use. And once you figure out the engine you're going to use, then you need to figure out the engine version. And to do that, one way I can do that here is using the git rds db engine version command again. This time we're going to use the engine parameter and pass it SQL Server ex. So we're going to pass it the exact engine that we want to see. And then I'm going to pass it to format table and so I can just see the engine versions. All right, so now that I have decided on SQL Server Express, I can then see all the engine versions here. So you can see there's anything from 10 to all the way up to 14. And by default, the new RDS DB instance command that we're going to be using will always use the latest and greatest. So whenever we run this in a minute, it will get 14.003035.2.v1. All right, so now that we know the engine and the engine version, we can use the new RDS DB instance commandlet to do that. And you can see there on line 27 and 29, I've created a comments. One, you can find the available DB instance on line 33. You see that I'm using db.t2.micro. Unfortunately, there's no API to find the database instances. So you have to go to that URL there that I showed you above to find all of the available ones if you don't know which one you want to use. And then finally, on line 29 there, I have the ensure the configuration is allowed. What you'll find is whenever you are creating these different configurations as far as a SQL Server or Oracle or any of the really the engine versions, sometimes you can't use for example, the SQL version with a particular engine or a different allocated storage. There's, there's a few different configurations to do. You'll see that in the URL that I'm providing there. All right, with that being said, let's now create a DB instance using new RDS DB instance. And you can see there in line 30 through 38, I'm specifying all the parameters. The DB instance identifier, that's going to be the name of our database instance, obviously, TechSnips2. It's going to be SQL Server Express. It's going to be db.t2.micro. I'm providing the SA username and password there. And do note that you cannot include a forward slash the hat symbol, double quotes, or spaces because I tried and it didn't work. So on line 36 there, allocated storage, that's 20 gigabytes. So we're gonna start out with a uh, 20 gig database. And then finally, you don't have to do this, but you can also use publicly accessible equals true, and that allows you to connect over the internet if it's connected to the right VPC. But we're not gonna get into that. You can get as crazy as you want, but this, this is gonna be just basically creating the instance. All right, so with that being said, now let's go ahead and create the instance. And let's hope it works. Oh, DB instance already exists. All right, no big deal. Three, don't you love demos? You can just kind of wing it if you want. There we go, we'll do tech tips three, same difference for us. All right, so now you can see that it does return all of the different properties that we had set for it. So um, it did successfully create tech snips three. All right, but now notice that one of the properties here has the DB instance status somewhere. So we look over here, there, you can see DB instance status is creating. And you won't be able to do anything with this instance until it is available. So you can return information on your RDS DB instances with get RDS DB instance. And I'm doing that here on line 44. And I'm just looking at the DB instance status property. So I can run this as many times as I want. 
and you'll see that it's creating, creating, creating. We're essentially just going to have to wait on it. What's going to happen is whenever this gets created, it goes into a creating state and it goes into a backing up state. And then finally it gets into an available state because I don't want to hit this every time. I'm just going to start a while loop here. And the while loop is just going to check the DB instance status property to make sure it's not equal to available because it's when it's equal to available, that's when we finally want it. And it's just going to try this every 30 seconds until it is finally created. So let's go ahead and wait for this until it's done. And when it is, we'll pick back up. All right, so now it finally created. When you create these micro instances, it can be up to 10 to 15 minutes to bring one of these things up. But now, according to our script, we're back at the prompt here and it looks like it's created. So now we can go over to AWS and now we can see we have Text snips three here and the status is available. At this point, we can go in here and we can see everything that we set. So it's SQL Server Express Edition, DBT2 Micro, and it is now available. And we can do whatever we want at this point because now we finally have a new RDS DB instance created and we did it all with PowerShell.